cuties, I'm back. And today we're doing another episode of Beauty and the Bibliophile. If you're new here, welcome to my channel and welcome to the cute life. I'm your cult leader, Leah. Today we are doing another episode of Beauty and the Bibliophile where I do my makeup and I tell you about the latest book that I've read. If you don't know what a bibliophile is, it is a lover and collector of books. Me, I'm, I'm the bibliophile and the beauty. Today, we're doing a book that's a little different than I've done on this channel so far. It's actually a how-to book, but it's a new hobby of mine and I just wanted to share it with you because I know there's a lot of you out there that have also probably picked up this hobby in the past couple of years. Over the past couple of years, you know, the way the world went, we all had a little bit of extra time on our hands. And so some of us picked up hobbies. A lot of us picked up gardening because it was a way to go outside of our house. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I did the same thing. I started a, a little tiny, tiny garden, literally like I started with one plant, then I had two, then three, then a few more. And I was doing okay with some of it, but other parts I was really struggling and I could just not figure out what was going on with my plants and why a lot of them were dying. Some of them weren't, but still weren't as big as I thought they should be. So anyway, my sweet husband, one day, he was at Costco picking up some food and he got me a little something, a book on gardening. This one is The First Time Gardener by Jessica Sowards, I believe is how you say her last name. And I was excited when he came home with this because first of all, it's exactly what I needed. <laughs> something for a beginner. But two, she has a YouTube channel that I was already familiar with which is the Roots and Refuge Farm. And I will link her channel in the description below. But yeah, so I read this book and I actually implemented some of the suggestions and ideas and I saw an improvement. Can you believe it? And now I have, I kind of have like a little garden. I have kind of a small space in the backyard, but with help from this book, I've made it work. So yeah, let's get into this book. If you're at all curious about gardening and at the end of this video I'll probably insert some little clips of my garden just so you know what I'm talking about. So let's get started. Okay so The First Time Gardener by Jessica Swords. So Swords. Sorry Jessica. Anyway The First Time Gardener and she has a YouTube channel called Roots and Refuge Farm and I will link her channel below. So Jessica says that the garden is a classroom and that by choosing to be a gardener, you're choosing to be a student and you must constantly be observing, learning and growing. You're gonna definitely make mistakes, but that's okay. You're using this as a learning opportunity. So if something doesn't work, make observations change variables and try again, just like a scientist would do. You need to learn how to learn, how to ask questions and adapt to conditions and overcome obstacles. So we have to get into a little bit of botany here. Botany is the study of plants and plants have one objective in their life and that is to create seeds and spread their seeds so that they can keep their kind alive. Now the words fruits and vegetables mean something completely different in the culinary world than they do in the botanical world. There actually isn't anything called vegetables in the botanical world. What we have come to know as vegetables are actually different parts of the plant. So things like carrots and radishes and turnips are actually the roots of the plants. Celery, leeks, and rhubarb are 
the stem of the plant. Kale, lettuce, and chard are the leaves. And in most cases, herbs are also the leaves that we're eating. And when we eat beans or shelled peas or corn, we're eating the seeds of the plant at its different stages of maturity. Now, some plants have fruit, and the fruit of the plant is the seed-bearing structure. So it's the ovary of the plant. A tomato is a fruit, a cucumber is a fruit, peppers, lettuce, spinach, those are all the fruits of the plants. Now, fruiting plants make flowers. The flowers of some plants contain both the male and female parts of the plant. Other plants have separate male and female flowers. Either way, pollination happens when the pollen of the male plant comes in contact with the female part of the plant. When this happens, the flower or the ovary of the plant begins to swell and bear a fruit. And inside the fruit are seeds. Now when creatures come along and eat this fruit, they digest and then evacuate the seeds. Thus, the seed spreads and the plant has fulfilled its purpose. Now seeds want to grow. They're doing the very best that they can to fulfill their purpose and stay alive until they've done this. As a gardener, you're not trying to convince something to, to do something it doesn't naturally want to do. So, I mean, gardening isn't really rocket science. You're just there to partner with the plant and help it do what it already wants to do. Now, in this book, the author doesn't really talk too much about, you know, GMO seeds and that kind of stuff, but she does touch on it because she knows people are concerned about GMOs and icky things on their food. But you don't really need to worry too much about this because, you know, in the home garden, because uh, GMO seeds, which are made in a lab, which is different than a hybrid, a hybrid occurs when two kinds of plants in the same genus kind of naturally cross breed. So the pollen of, you know, this kind of tomato will accidentally or on purpose make its way to the female part of this other kind of tomato. And then you have a whole new kind of tomato which is fine, that's not, you know, that's naturally occurring. A GMO seed is kind of somewhat the same process, but it's forced in a scientific lab. <laughs> but either way, you don't need to worry too much about it because GMO seeds are not legally allowed to be sold to home gardeners. The only people who use these GMO seeds are like, you know, the big, big farms, industrial farms. The stuff that you buy at the grocery store could be from GMO seeds. But don't worry, wherever you buy your seeds, whether they're at, you know, a big box store or online from a seed company, they're not gonna be GMO seeds, okay? Now the book moves on to the foundations, what every garden needs to succeed. So the first thing is sunlight. Now, most plants that are, you know, fruit bearing need what they call full sun. And full sun is anywhere from six to eight hours of direct sunlight on those plants a day. They could grow with less light, but it's going to take much longer and the quality, you know, they're not going to be as large and the plants aren't going to produce as much fruit. The next thing you need is water. Now you can water your garden several different ways. You can just haul the water, which is exactly what it sounds like, taking water from the faucet to your garden in a 
a bucket or in a, a watering can. And this is pretty feasible if you have a, you know, a small garden, like a couple of raised beds or, you know, a very small in-ground garden. Your next option is rain catchment, which you can get some sort of uh, rain barrel or large barrel and install it at where the gutter system on your house or some other structure on your property comes out and it just catches the rainwater so that you know you'll have it to water your plants with which is actually a really great way to do it because one it saves on water it saves you money and rainwater is rich in nitrogen which plants really need and our tap water doesn't have it then there's hose watering this again is super easy very little investment and very easy to install right and just screw it on but you do need to be careful with the hose because you want to make sure you're not dragging it over your plants when you're moving it around the garden there's also soaker hoses and drip tape these are you know hands off irrigation systems that are actually the easiest form of watering but there is a bit of investment and some installation involved. So soaker hoses are left on at the base of the plant and they're left on for hours. And this helps water the plant deeply and you can move these around the garden. Whereas a drip system is installed and you can't move it. Now, soil is one of the most important factors in the garden. If you have problems with your soil, you're gonna have problems in your garden. And anytime there is an issue in the garden, the first place you're gonna look is in your soil. Soil isn't alive the way that your plant is, but it is a living ecosystem. Good soil is full of life whereas bad soil is void of life. If you grab some soil in your garden, you should see a whole neighborhood of living things. There's literally millions of organisms in every handful of soil. So what's the difference between dirt and soil, okay? Dirt is what we sweep off of our kitchen floor. Soil, is a living ecosystem. Now, soil has basic needs that it needs met in the garden as well. First, it needs really good drainage. Your garden, of course, needs water, but not too much. Soil has to drain well or the neighborhood will flood. So you wanna choose an area in your garden or in your yard that doesn't routinely pull up and flood. If your lot in general just doesn't drain well, then a good solution to this are raised garden beds. So if your area gets a lot of rain or your lot, again, just doesn't drain well, try out raised garden beds. You can also try out containers, which are more economical solution. And if your containers aren't drain, draining well, then all you have to do is drain some, uh, drill some extra holes in the bottom of the container. Now, again, our garden needs water, but we want to hydrate our soil versus just our plants. If our plants become too dry, they actually become uh, water repellent. So if you live in an area that's very hot or your soil is very sandy, has a sandy consistency, it's gonna be a struggle to maintain proper moisture. One thing you can do is uh, add organic matter to the soil. This will help it retain the moisture. You can also uh, water your garden in the evening hours or even after sundown and this will reduce the eva evaporation that <laughs> occurs. And then the last thing you can do is mulch. 
covering the uh, soil with organic debris will help lock in the moisture. You also need to feed your soil. Once your garden is, you know, pretty well established, the nutrients in your soil are going to start to deplete. So you're going to have to replenish it. Now the best way to do this is with any type of organic matter. Uh, you know, leaves that you rake up, uh, grass clippings, but what you want is just something that's rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, which are naturally occurring in nature. So these are best, but if for some reason you can't get these things, then buying, you know, a store-bought fertilizer is going to be your best option. So all the things we've just talked about, which is, you know, light, water, and covering your soil, all these things are the non-negotiables. You have to do this if you're gonna produce food in your garden. But from here on out, you can be creative and try out different things. So it's best that your first garden be something that's very manageable. And that's, of course, gonna be, you know, different for every person. And then once you have a handle on something that you've been able to manage for a while and keep alive, you can expand on your knowledge and experience. Now, a lot of people wanna know, well, what should I grow in my first garden? And, I mean, really, you wanna grow what you're gonna eat. So think about what you buy at the grocery store. Because I mean, regardless of how easy something is to grow, if you or your family don't like that food, they're not gonna eat it. So what's the point? It's kind of a wasted effort. So just, you know, if you don't like zucchini, zucchini is supposedly an easier plant to grow or any kind of squash. But if you don't like it, so just grow what you like to start with. Now, there are several kinds of gardening styles. So first there's raised garden beds, which we've mentioned. And these are great if your soil, like just in your yard, isn't the most nutrient rich, um, or if you don't have a lot of good drainage on your lot. It also saves your back. There's less weeding, but it is kind of expensive to get going and the beds are not movable. Once you've chosen a spot for them, that's where they have to stay. Then there's in-ground gardening, which is the most economical. You don't have to you know, get any structures on the property. If you're a renter, this is good because it's temporary. Most landlords will be okay with you planting some plants in the ground versus bringing on some structures into the yard. There is the issue though of having to weed, having to get down on your hands and knees, and also um, the soil. Whatever soil is there is what you have to work with. Now that's not a total game stopper. You can add nutrients to your already existing soil, but it is gonna be a little bit more of a struggle. Then there's container gardening, which is the approach that I'm taking. And this is good if you are limited on space. They're also very easy to move around, which is why I like them because in my backyard, I don't have a whole lot of sun. So I have to move the plants <laughs> with the sun so I can make sure that they get the six to eight hours that they need. But pots do tend to dry out faster. So you're gonna probably have to water them a little bit more especially if you live in a hot climate. All right, then another thing that a lot of people wonder about when they're first getting started is should I plant from seeds or should I get some of those starter plants, like the ones that have already been started? And this is really just gonna be a matter of preference. So if you buy started plants, that's pretty straightforward. Obviously, someone has taken the time to start the seed and nurture it through its you know, life so far, so that all you have to do is take it home and put it into the soil. They can be a little bit more of an investment though. Each plant is probably only gonna cost a couple bucks, 
but if you're doing a whole garden that's gonna add up quickly whereas if you start your plants from seed you can spend a couple bucks on a whole packet of seed that somehow sometimes you know is gonna have 20 to even 100 seeds you're also gonna have more of a selection to choose from if you start from seeds because if you buy the started plants basically the nursery or the store is only gonna take the time to start plants that are the more popular ones so that they can guarantee a return on their investment so if there's something that you want to grow something maybe a little exotic and unique you're probably going to have to start from a seed now how do you know when to start your seeds the decision on this is going to be based on the area that you live in on the first and last frost date now on every packet of seeds on the back it'll say start your seed you know this many days before or after the first or last frost now you can find your area's first or last frost really easily on google that's how i figured mine out now the biggest issue for me when i first started trying to garden was that i didn't know how much to water Everything I looked up on Google or on YouTube said, water as needed, Do, water a lot, water a little. I'm like, but I don't even know how much that is. <laughs> but this book finally answered that for me. Literally gave me a straightforward answer. And I figured out that I was overwatering, which is actually a pretty more common mistake with beginning gardeners than underwatering. I figured they needed water every day. And some, maybe they can tolerate that, but not others. The best way to figure out if you need to water is to look at the soil, grab a little bit, and if it sticks together pretty well, it's fine. It doesn't need any more watering. If it's starting to crumble apart or feel sandy, then it's probably time to water. Now, after all this hard work, we finally get to come to the harvest and reap the benefits. One thing that you need to know is that your food that's gonna come out of your garden is gonna need to be treated a little bit differently than the stuff you get at the store. The food at the store has gone through a lot of different processes to make it look pretty and for it to be edible. Now, the food that's gonna come out of your garden is real food and that comes dirty. And sometimes it has bugs on it. So we gotta make sure and wash it really well, especially things like cauliflower, broccoli, plants and vegetables that have a lot of crevices where there could be bugs we don't see. So the best way to do this is to fill your sink or a big bowl with tap water and dissolve about three tablespoons of salt and then soak your plant, your vegetables for about 20 minutes and that's going to draw out any bugs and then just give it a really good rinse in the faucet and then you can prepare and serve your homegrown healthy food for yourself and for your family and reap the benefits of all your hard work and know where your food comes from and feel good about it. So your first garden is going to be a learning experience and it has for me for sure. There will be some successes and there will be lots of failures. But don't give up because there's always next year. That's the great thing about gardening. There's always another season and you can try again. So yeah, that was the first time gardener. <laughs> I know it was a little different than anything I've done on this channel so far, but me sharing these books with you, these episodes are about the books that I'm reading, something that I would read normally. I don't pick books based on how I think they're gonna do on the channel. I pick books based on what I feel like reading at the time. So yeah, let me know if you've attempted any gardening and how it's gone for you. This book has really helped me out a lot. I made quite a bit of notes on things that I wanna try. And yeah, 
I think maybe at the end of this video, I'll give you a little bit of a, a sneak peek at the garden that I've started. Yeah, why don't we do that right now? Okay, so here is my little garden. <laughs> a little bit over there. So these are tomatoes that I started from seed. They've all popped through finally. These are some flowers that haven't come through. Spinach. Now these are some spinaches I started a long time ago and I didn't understand what it meant when a spinach bolts and then goes to seed. So I figured, hey, I'll just keep these and try to use the seeds next year. I need to figure out which is what actually is the seed <laughs> but yeah so that's why I just kept these but now I know that to keep it from going to seed you need to prune it more so I'm retrying with these and here we have some potatoes the potato are growing in here so once that's ready to harvest, I can dig this up and see what's in there. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Okay, my basil is not doing well, <laughs> if you can tell. I bought this as a plant at the grocery store and tried to keep it alive. It was doing well and I thought, okay, I'll move it outside because it was in my kitchen for it to get more sun and more space and then it started looking like this. So I don't know if I did it much of a service. Ah. Moving it outside. <laughs> we'll see. Just gonna keep going until it is totally dead. <laughs> Here's some kale that just popped through. Some broccoli and cauliflower. These over here are a bunch of bell peppers. Uh, let's see some garlic and okay so I have more tomatoes over here now some of these were seeds but a couple if I can remember which one I think it was just this one this one I actually started from tomato scraps so I just cut a tomato that I got at the store in half and stuck it in the pot it took a lot longer to grow but it's the tallest because i started it the earliest so anyway keep my eye on that what else do we have uh here's some zucchini this was my very first plant this is an oregano plant and the same thing happened with this it's gone to seed I don't know really know how to get the seeds out, <laughs> but I'll figure it out. I just thought I'd let it go to seed and then try to plant some more. Here is an artichoke. Now an artichoke I've heard takes a very long time to uh, grow, a couple years actually. So I'm investing some time in this one. Over here we have beans, some bush beans, and some cucumbers. And I moved them over here because these ones grow vertically. So eventually I'm gonna trellis these up this little fence. So yeah, I mean, like I said, I haven't gotten any fruit off of anything yet. <laughs> except the herbs and the spinach but yeah I'm just gonna keep trying and we'll see what happens so yeah that's my little garden I'm trying real hard <laughs> I haven't gotten any fruit off of my plants yet but I'm hoping I will soon and if I do I'm sure you will probably see it on my Friday vlogs so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that Give this video a like so that I know you care 
and it helps me decide what kind of videos to make. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hey. <laughs> you don't like this? Big surprise. Luxie doesn't like me doing stuff. Bubs, come on. What second I start? Called Roots and Rest Roots <laughs> and Plant. Now, fruiting plants. Now, flowering. That was right. <laughs> so you want to choose <coughs> um, and then you can prepare and serve your homegrown food and then you can prepare and serve your healthy homegrown food to yourself and your family. <laughs> So yeah, that was, so yeah, let me know if you are, <laughs> and if I do, I'm sure you'll see in, um,